Hey everyone, we're making a series of videos available to you to learn Amazon EC2 with 10 labs and 20 facts and refreshers for your exam. The full course is available on YouTube. It's also available on Udemy. You can check the links in the description below to view the Udemy link. This course is produced by Cloud Yeti. We make simplified cloud computing, AWS, and DevOps videos. You can contact us by emailing us, checking out our GitHub, visiting our website, or following us on LinkedIn. I'll be the presenter for this course. My name is Saurav Sharma. I am seven times AWS certified. You can support us by helping us reach 5,000 subscribers. We're currently around 3,300 and reaching 5,000 is very important to us. So if you want to support us, start by subscribing to us. And you can also watch our other content, uh, buy our courses on Udemy, etc. We're adding a lot more content, so we're open to feedback, suggestions, and requests from you guys because we're making these videos for you guys. All right, now let's get started. Welcome back. This is lab number five. And the title of this lab is AWS EC2 Command Line Interface Commands. If you go to this page, then you land on the AWS Command Line Interface page, uh, which will tell you that the AWS Command Line Interface is a tool to manage your AWS services so that you can use simple commands like AWS EC2 Describe Instances and list all your instances. So we're gonna do this right now with the same EC2 instance that we used in the lab before this uh, that I have right here. But if you don't have this EC2 instance with you, then you can create a new EC2 instance. I'll be creating a new EC2 instance because why not? So let's get started. The first step, launch Amazon Linux AMI. In the instance type, I'll stick with T2 Micro. Next, everything default here, so say next. Next, tag this as AWS CLI or something. Next, security group, I will select an existing security group with port 80 and 22. If you don't have this, you can create a security group with these ports open. Review and launch. So I select a key pair and launch. Now all of us should be in the same page, right? We either have a instance from previous lab or we just created an EC2 instance. So I'm gonna give this a minute or so before I try to log in. And before that, like we learned in the last lab, we need permissions to you know, work with even EC2 service from an EC2 instance. So for me to be able to say stop EC2 from an EC2, I need some permissions. And we did that using roles in the last lab. And similarly, we need to attach a role to this EC2 instance. And we'll go to actions, instance settings, attach replace IM role, and select the same role as last time that we chose in lab number four with EC2 and S3 full access. I'm gonna apply this, close, and at this point, I click connect, I get this connection string, close in my downloads uh, directory where the PEM file is, I'll paste the connection string, type enter, and say yes when I get this message. Enter, and I'm logged in to my EC2 instance. So, once you're in, so all we need to do is to configure the AWS uh, CLI. So, AWS configure, type enter. It will ask you for the access key ID. You don't need to type anything because we are using roles. So type enter, same thing with the secret access key. No need, type enter. Now the default region is required. For me, it's US East 1. 
if I didn't do this, then I would have said dash dash region US East one after every single command. If I do the configure, I do it once and I don't need to put this anymore. So for example, our first command will be AWS EC2 run instances dash dash image dash ID space and I need to provide the image ID now. I can find that by clicking on launch instance and go to Amazon Linux AMI and select this AMI ID and image ID will be that and one more thing that I need is dash dash instance type t2.micro now all I need to launch an EC2 instance is this AWS EC2 run instances image ID so you need to provide the image ID and the instance type anything else is not necessary you know some default values will be applied like the default VPC the default security groups and so on so as long as you do this we should be good but I still have this dash dash region US East one here just to show you that if we hadn't done the AWS configure you know we would need to put this uh, at the end of every single command I can still leave this because you know it's gonna work and if I wanted to query things in the US East 2 I could do it that way instead of setting US East 2 hard-coded in the configuration so with that I'm going to just enter this command to show you that all I need to launch an EC2 instance is this much enter and you get something as an output uh, where you can see some of the details like the VPC ID and the private address of this EC2 instance the security groups used and so on and so on so we just used one command to launch an EC2 instance and you can find that command by going to the labs folder of our course repo lab 5 so in our lab uh, file step number one is so this is the command that I used here to launch this instance let's move on to number two then let's launch another instance with Windows AMI this time right we launched an uh, you know instance with Linux AMI now let's do Windows so let's go back to the EC2 uh, management console and and click on launch instance and in this box let's type in Windows that will filter out all the Windows AMIs available and you can choose any of the AMI so I'm going to choose the top AMI because it doesn't matter which one I choose I just want to launch a Windows instance so 2019 is fine but any other Windows AMI is also fine I'm gonna choose this and go back to my command line and I'm gonna bring up the previous command with an up arrow and go to the AMI ID replace that with the Windows AMI ID everything stays the same EC2 run instances image ID this is Windows AMI ID and instance type of t2micro type enter and now I have a Windows EC2 instance running and right here it says platform is Windows so let's go to our th third command list all the instance and their details so so far we launched EC2 instances and we should have three EC2 instances if you're uh, doing this lab with me so now you can use a command like AWS EC2 describe instances this means list all the instances and list all the attributes the instance has right so type enter and you see a list of instances right this is one instance starting from here to the bottom this is another right and this is the third one that I have you should have something similar if you're doing this lab with me 
So we have a few instances in this, you know, come up when we do this. What if I want to get only the IP address of my instances, right? What if I don't want to see all this uh, extra stuff, uh, you know, contained in this output? Just give me the public IP address. And to do that, you'd use a command, uh, something like this, number four, describe and query specific things, IP address of all the instances. Go back to the command line and type in this command and you can list out the IP addresses of all your instances. Right now I have four instances and uh, you know I can see four IP addresses. This is public IP addresses. You know, you can do a few things while trying to query your instances. You can filter out certain instances. Um, if you go to the management console first and go to the EC2 dashboard, click on your running instances. And there's a box here that says filter by tags and attributes or search by keyword. So when you click on this, you can filter by many things like image ID, you know, owner, platform, etc. So if I click on platform, I get two options of Linux or Windows. Let's say I, w I just wanna find out what my uh, Windows instances are. Click on Windows and I have one instance that we just launched uh, with the command line interface. So the same way we can filter out things by using a command like this, which filters and gives me only the IP addresses of the Windows instance. So it's kind of like combining the concept of filter and query that we used in the last command. When we enter a command like this in the command line interface, I get one IP address just like I did in the EC2 management console. And this matches the IP and it should because we just filtered out just the Windows instance. So as you can see, you can do things like query and filters and you know work with your EC2 instances and get quick results when you're trying to work with EC2 instances using the command line interface. So now we have done these things. Let's stop one of our EC2 instance. I'm gonna go back to my management console and you know make a note of uh, one of my EC2 instances that I launched with the command line interface. I'm gonna copy this go back to my terminal and type in a command to stop this instance, right? Stop this instance, AWS EC2 stop dash instances instance dash IDs, right? And paste the instance ID. So once we stop the instances, let's uh, go ahead and make sure it is stopped. Yes, it is. And now let's terminate this instance, right? Not just stop, but terminate. And terminate means, you know, release forever. I don't need this anymore. So bring up the previous command and instead of saying stop instances, I'm gonna type terminate instances, enter. And now it's terminating the instance. If I go to the management console and refresh, you know, it says terminated and it's pretty quick. So we stopped our EC2 uh, and we terminated the EC2. And you should know the basic EC2 CLI commands now and you should know how to set up the CLI and how to use roles. So with that, you know, you're free to experiment more by clicking on this link. And this will take you to, you know, more documentation and official uh, documentation and steps. We also have a command line interface course on Udemy that covers not just EC2, but a lot of other services. And there is a GitHub repo for it. Uh, you can go to this repo. I'm gonna link this repo in the description below. Now let's do some cleanup before we stop this lab. Let's go to the EC2 management console, select everything except the one that's already terminated and actions, instant state, terminate. Yes, terminate, and all the instances will be terminated. Now we've done some cleanup. 
Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next lab.